You don't need fancy gear and cyber security. I see a lot of comments on people asking how much RAM they need or how beefy their computer needs to be to handle cyber security work. If you're one of those people, then listen up. I'm gonna save you a lot of money and you're gonna thank me for it in the end. If you're new here, then my name is Jono and I work in cybersecurity. And if you're browsing for some top of the line MacBook Pro or something along those lines, then stop. You don't really need that. In fact, you don't need to buy anything at all. When you're working in a company, not just cybersecurity, but just an organization as a whole, they'll generally give you a corporate laptop if you're the type of company that allows you to work from home or in a hybrid environment. The laptop would already have enough RAM RAM and disk space and CPU, whatever else you need to do your work efficiently. So if you're just thinking about buying one just for work, then now you know that you actually don't need to buy anything. There you go, I've just saved you from wasting a couple of thousand dollars. But you might be thinking, Jono, what if I don't have a job yet? What if I just want to study and practice the tools on my laptop? Now this is a bit more interesting because it really depends on what your use case is. The majority of the security tools that we use are all in the cloud. That means you don't need to download any software on your computer at all to run them. You simply go on their website portal and do the work there. But you might have a use case that do require you to have a somewhat good laptop and that is running VMs or virtual machines. The general use case for that is to create lab environments to simulate individual endpoints. For example, you might be practicing vulnerability management on an EDR solution. This might require you to have a number of endpoints or VMs to simulate different scenarios. If you want to see what an EDR solution actually does when an endpoint has a virus, then just download and run a virus on that virtual machine and see what happens. The good thing about this is everything is contained within that virtual environment so your main machine doesn't get impacted at all. Another use case might be getting event logs into a same solution like Splunk. You can see all kinds of logs over there like security logs or application logs from all these virtual machines and you can do some practice alerts and dashboards that simulate a real world operation. Another use case that you might require a good laptop is if you're doing malware analysis. So malware analysis is basically taking a suspicious file, maybe a virus, ransomware or some bad executable and figuring out what it actually does. Not what it claims to do, but what it really does behind the scenes. And there are two main ways people do this. First is dynamic analysis. That's where you run a malware inside a lockdown virtual machine and you just watch it. You're monitoring for things like what files it touches, what registry keys it edits, and what network connections it tries to make, and whether or not it's phoning home to some random server in another country. Now here's the thing, you're not running just one VM. You might have a Windows VM for malware, a monitoring VM, a snapshot system so you can roll back everything when things go bad. And with all these different things running, your RAM usage can be quite intensive. Now the second type is static analysis, also known as reverse engineering. This is where it gets quite heavy as well. You're loading the malware into tools like disassemblers and debuggers, and you're literally breaking it down line by line to understand how it's obfuscated, how it hides from any virus, and how it persists after the reboots and also how it steals the data or encrypts the files. These tools load huge binaries into memory and are CPU intensive as well. If your laptop isn't strong enough, everything starts lagging, freezing or just straight up crashing. So at this point you might be thinking, okay, Jono, fair enough, running VMs and malware analysis needs a decent laptop. What if I just don't do that locally? What if I just do everything in the cloud? And honestly, that's a very valid question. The short answer is yes, but you probably shouldn't, at least not as a student. Let me explain. A lot of cybersecurity today is cloud-based. Same solutions, cloud. EDR platforms, cloud. Identity logging, detection, dashboards, alerting, all cloud. Which is why I said earlier, most of the tools that we use every day don't even live on your laptop. You log into portals, you click around, you investigate alerts, you write detections, your laptop is basically just a browser. So you might be wondering, why not just go cloud only? Here's where people get tripped up. Cloud platforms like AWS or Azure work on a pay-as-you-go model, which sounds great at first. You don't need a powerful laptop, you don't need a 32 gigs of RAM, you just spin up a big machine when you need it. But here's the catch, and this is pretty important. As a student, you're experimenting, you're learning, you're breaking things constantly, and in the cloud, mistakes cost money. You forget to shut down a virtual machine, that's money. You leave storage attached, that's also money. You take snapshots and you forget about them, you guessed it, 
also money. And it's not always obvious either. You don't get a big red warning saying, hey, you're burning cash right now. You usually find out a bit later in the bill. When you're learning cybersecurity, you want freedom. You want to be able to spin things up, tear them down, retry the labs, break environments. You want to mess around without fear. And the moment there's a dollar sign attached to every click, you kind of hesitate. You start to think, do I really need to run this again? Should I leave this on? Is this going to cost me? That mental overhead is going to slow down your learning, which is the opposite of what we want early on. Now, don't get me wrong. Cloud is still extremely important. In fact, if you want to work in cybersecurity long term, you have to understand cloud environments, things like IAM permissions, networking, logs and monitoring, cloud native security controls. But cloud is best used intentionally and with purpose. Think of it like this, your laptop is like a sandbox and your cloud environment is your real world simulator. You don't live in the simulator full time. You jump into it when you have a specific goal. So the setup I usually recommend, especially for students, look like this. You use your laptop for running VMs, lab environments, malware analysis practice, SIEM testing with local logs, basically learning the fundamentals. This is where your RAM, CPU, and even your SSD speed matters. Then you use the cloud for learning AWS or Azure security, practicing IAM misconfigurations, understanding enterprise style setups. You want to focus on short labs. You want to spin it up, learn what you need, shut it down. That way your cost stays predictable your learning stays fast and you don't really stress about the bills. Now, before you guys go crazy in the comments, no, you don't need a maxed out MacBook Pro and you don't need a gaming laptop with a massive GPU. What you want is balance. Something with at least 16 gigs of RAM, maybe 32 gigs if you can afford it or if you want to future-proof yourself. Hardware storage, maybe around one terabyte and a decent CPU. That's it. That setup will comfortably get you through universities, certifications and all the home labs that you'll be doing. And once you learn a job, your employer will give you a work laptop anyway. So here's the big takeaway. If you're already working in cybersecurity, don't buy a laptop for work. Your company will give you one. If you're studying cybersecurity, get a reasonable laptop, not a luxury one. So you can use it to learn, experiment and break things safely. And then use the cloud as a tool, not as your primary platform. So basically, laptop first, cloud second. That combination will save you money and reduce stress and actually help you learn faster. By the way, if you found this video helpful, then share it to a friend to help them out as well. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching.